Hey everybody, this is Adam, and the video you're about to watch is a part of a series. Now you can watch that entire series for free over at cadjunkie.com with our free seven-day subscription. It is a no-brainer. I definitely recommend you check that out. All right, enjoy. We now have two parts in our assembly. One is the connector that we just created, and one is the plank that we created before that. And those are both contained within our assembly, right? We understand that. And the connector is currently blue in my tree, which means it is active, right? So if I click on the plank, I could click the little blue Tetris piece to edit that. It turns blue, the connector turns black, and we are editing the plank. If I want to go edit my assembly, I can click the assembly and click on edit assembly, and everything turns back to black again. Okay, so at any time, we can click any of these and edit it just by clicking on the edit button for that object. Now these things are overlapping each other, which is kind of visually problematic. That's why it looks so ugly on our screen here. To change that, all we have to do is move either one of these components. I want to move the plank. So let's drop down the little plus sign to the left of our plank, and you'll see that uh, we have all of the contents of our plank part document listed underneath, including these things called mates. Mates are how we connect things in 3D in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to go over that in the next video, but for now, let's drop that down, click on this one called In Place, that's basically just fixing it in one spot. We'll delete that just by hitting the Delete key on my keyboard, not Backspace, by the way, the little Delete key, and then hit Yes, and it's going to delete that, uh, that fix constraint, which means now I can take and drag this out away from our original location. And as we rotate around, you'll see now in three-dimensional space, we've moved it. And we can move it anywhere just by dragging it now. It's completely free and floating out in space. Don't worry, we can lock that down later. Now let's add a couple of details to these models. I'm going to right-click on my part out here in space and head up and click Open Part. Just another way of opening this thing up in its own window. I'll go to a nice isometric view of that. And we can see that this part is uh, pretty much blank. Let's grab the front plane and create a sketch on that front plane. And I can do that just with this shortcut right here if I want. Click Sketch, and now we're cre we've created a sketch. Now, you can see the plane out there in 3D space. We want to look straight at that as a matter of habit, right? So we'll go up here to our View menu and click on that Normal 2 button. That's going to look straight at this guy exactly the way we want. And I'm just going to... Uh, control and shift drag with my middle mouse button to zoom in to the part I want to look at. I'll hit the S key on my keyboard, drop down to my circle tool, click that, click on the origin of my part, move my mouse on out, and let's say we want this to be 10 millimeters and hit enter. So I have a 10 millimeter circle right here. It's going to become a hole. Okay, so this time let's go over to our features tab and click extruded cut. Now, Extruded Cut is going to try to cut a hole through our part. And as I rotate around, you'll see that it's cutting out into the distance behind our object, which is not ideal. So let's go to our Direction 1 properties. And it currently says Blind. Blind just means I'm going to go a certain direction and a certain distance, and that's that, no matter what else is happening in the scene. But instead, I'll drop that down and say Through All, and then Flip the direction. You can see the arrow is pointing the wrong way. So let's head over here to this button for reverse direction. And now it's just going to go through everything in our part in this direction. Perfect. Hit OK. And we now have a hole going through our product. So now I'd like to pattern this hole all the way down our shape. So let's click on our Boss Extrude feature over here in the design tree drop that down and you'll see that original sketch that we used to create our extrusion. We're going to talk about what these features and everything are, don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that. But for now, let's just click that sketch and head up to these little eyeglasses for show. Click that and now our sketch is visible in our 3D viewport, right? You can see the gray lines there for our sketch. Further, our sketch is no longer grayed out in the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's also visible there as well. So in our tool ribbon, I'm going to head up to the Features tab and over to the Linear Pattern drop-down. Click the arrow to drop that down and find the Curve Driven Pattern. Click that. 
under direction one, I want to choose the center line of our slot. So that's defining where our pattern holes are going to go. I'm going to scroll down here and find the features to pattern box down below. And under features to pattern, I'll click in this blue box, zoom in a little bit here, and then click the inside face of this hole. And that's going to create for me holes all along my curve. If I scroll back up in my properties, you'll see that I have equal spacing checked. That's really important. And then if I add more holes, it just squeezes them in along that curve. Or I can add fewer holes, and it fills them up. So let's do five holes. Click the green check mark to finish that feature. And now we have a bunch of holes in our document. I'll click on my sketch again. Click on this hide button right above it. And we now have a finished part. We can close this using the X at the top right. Yes, we want to save that. We're back in our assembly and ready to make another change. Now let's make a change to this one real quick as well. And this one we can do in context. I'll just click Edit Part. So we're editing the part right here in context. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm finding this black a little bit hard to see. Let's head back over to our appearances. Scroll down here. I'll grab this yellow one. Apply that once again to the entire Tetris piece. And there we go. Now, to make a change to this, let's grab the front face of this, head up to our Sketch toolbar, and click on the Sketch command. We'll head over to our Circle tool, click that, click on the origin, move our mouse out, type 10, Enter, head to Features, and Extrude Boss once again. Now this one we can do 2 millimeters, Enter, click the green check mark, and we now have a boss on one side of this guy. And I'd like to have one on the opposite side as well. And that's really straightforward to do. Let's head up to our Features tab and over to the Mirror command, if you can see it. If you can't see it, over here on the right, there's a little couple of arrows. You might have to click those to get to the extended tools that aren't fitting on your screen. Let's click on Mirror here. I'm going to expand my Feature Manager design tree here in my viewport. And we're going to expand our connector down. And under Mirror Face Slash Plane, I'll click here in this little area to turn it blue. And head down. I want to mirror across the front plane. OK, let's click that. And then under Bodies to Mirror, not Features to Mirror, but Bodies to Mirror, let's click in that area to turn it blue. And then click on the body we want to mirror. Make sure that under Options, we have Merge Solids checked and hit OK. Now we have one big giant chunk that's been mirrored straight across. And with that, I think we're ready to start putting together this scissor thingy. Let's click on our assembly, edit assembly, and get to work.